Hello guys and welcome back to the Minecraft on tutorial. Last episode we left off with um, a lot of errors in our container as it wants our tile entity class. So let's get started on that today. This is the second part of the custom chest series. So if you haven't seen that already, then go and check out the first episode. You'll see it in the i card now or link in the description. So hover over a tile and stick up a chest and create the class. I'm going to put this in blocks.tile entity. It's obviously going to extend tile entity, but a special type of tile entity called tile entity lockable loot. And it's also going to implement something called itickable. I'll go over what they mean as the functions cut themselves. Firstly, we need to create a list. So private non null list of item stack. And this is going to be the contents of the chest. So call it chest contents. A list of all the item stacks in the chest. This is equal to non null list dot and then click escape. Open triangle brackets again. Item stack with size. And then it's going to be the size of whatever you declared last time in your container. So mine's 72, um, as I did a nine by eight. And that's gonna be filled with item stacks that are empty. Control shift two, import non null list and item stack. A couple more variables, public int, number of players using, num players using, and also ticks since sync. This is all to do with the um, chest lid animations that we'll do later. And finally, a public float lid angle and previous lid angle. Firstly, the first function here is get size inventory, which we're of course going to return 72, or however big yours is. If you give that a save all, um, all the container stuff should go away all the errors from the container and the block as well. If you control shift down in the block and click save, it should all go away as well. Then the next function is empty for item stack, stack colon this dot chest contents. So what it's gonna do is go and check through every single um, item stack in the chest to see if it's empty. If any of the stacks are not empty, return false, else return true. You may remember the, a few of these functions from my furnace. The next one is get name. This is return this dot has custom name. This is a boolean, so we question mark that saying, does it have a custom name? If it's true, we set the custom, we just declare the custom name as the get name. Or using a colon, if it doesn't have a custom name, we use the string container dot copper chest. And we're gonna declare this in the lang file. Next we're gonna have to do a few things with MBTs. So read from MBT first. We put it as a super. Then we get the chest contents, this dot chest contents equals a non null list of item stack. Basically just copy everything from the top into there, except change 72 to this dot get size inventory. Then we have two if statements. If not this dot check loot and read compound then we will load all the items item stack helper dot load all items for the compound and the chest contents and if it has a custom name if compound dot has key custom name comma eight this dot custom name equals compound dot get string custom name. 
right to MBT. Firstly, super.write to MBT. Next, we're basically going to do the same thing but in reverse. If not this dot check loot and write compound, save all the items. Item stack helper, save all items, compound chest contents. And once again, if compound dot has key, custom name, eight, um, compound dot set string, custom name, and the value of this dot custom name. And then return compound. Up here, actually, I'm going to put another function get inventory stack limit. This is obviously going to be 64 as normal. But you can make this probably, I only recommend going up to 99 at most. Um, as Minecraft's um, GUIs and images aren't really designed to have more than two numbers in that slot. So you could make your chest store more than normal using that. In the tile entity, we also need to declare create container. So we just return the um, container, return new container, copper chest, the player inventory, this is the chest inventory, it's the tile entity, and then the player itself. It then wants the GUI ID, so get GUI ID. This is going to return your mod ID, plus and then colon, and then the name of your thing. This is declaring the um, place where the information about your GUI is going to be stored. This is um, different to the original GUI ID that we were using earlier to call the GUI. We then need one more simple function called get items. And we just return, it wants the list of items, so the chest contents. And then another thing that I'm going to leave in the description is this update function. This is what the um, itickable is asking for. Basically, it's just a whole lot of math with the variables from earlier. Control Shift to import everything. Then there's going to be the two functions you might remember from the container. Open inventory. So when you open the inventory, add a player to the using as you've opened the inventory, so there's clearly a player using it. Then add an event that happens in the world, this dot world dot add block event. In this position, this dot get block type, the event ID of one, and the number of players using. And finally, notify the other blocks about you opening the chest, this dot world dot notify neighbors of state change pause this dot get block type false then close inventory is going to be the exact same thing in reverse so copy and paste it in basically except instead of plus plus number of players using minus minus number of players using go to the GUI handler and control shift O to import uh, the tile entity so that error goes away. And then we can close the tile entity as we're finished with that now. Then back in the GUI handler, um, you're going to want to create the class GUI copper chest and put it inside of dot blocks dot GUI. This is going to extend a GUI container. Firstly, we're going to need to declare where the location of the GUI is. Private, static, final, Resource location, call it GUI chess. This is equal to a new resource location, reference to mod ID, plus, then quote, colon, textures, slash GUI, slash copper chest, dot PNG. Then a couple more variables. We need the player inventory and the tile entity. So private, final, inventory player. Um, player inventory and then private final tile entity copper chest call it te then get the constructor it's going to use the same variables as uh, the container does so the inventory player player inventory tile entity copper chest chest inventory and entity player player 
as the GUI has a super of the container new container copper chest with player inventory, chest inventory, and the player. Control shift zero to import entity player. We then just set all these variables. This dot player inventory equals player inventory. This dot tile entity equals chest inventory. And then also here we need to declare um, how big your GUI is. So this X size and this dot Y size. And so we're going to go now and I'm going to show you my GUI that I've created. Obviously you can use the same GUI as me. I will leave the link in the description. So here is my copper chest GUI. As you can see it's 9 by 8 and we're going to check how wide it is. Mine is 179 pixels wide, that's the X value. And it goes all the way to the bottom, so it's going to be 256 in the Y value. So obviously, I just created this GUI by um, getting the original chest and moving a bit of it around and adding more rows. So now we need to draw the actual GUI itself. So draw GUI container foreground layer. So this dot font renderer dot draw string this dot tile entity dot get display name dot get unformatted text and then I have my values at 8, 6 but this is a binary colour so as I've said before I'll leave links to the website in the description it's called hexadecimal and decimal colours and you can find the perfect colour that you want this dot font renderer dot draw string this dot player inventory dot get display name um, x location is 8 again the y location is this dot y size minus 92 obviously this value can be changed around for you again and I'm going to copy in the same decimal colour and that will draw the two um, names then we are going to draw the background layer now gl state manager dot colour 1.0f 1.0f, 1.0f, 1.0f. So that's it. That's it. Everything to white before we do anything. Then this dot mc dot get texture manager dot bind texture gui chest and then draw textured modal rec. This dot gui left. This dot gui top. 0, 0, this dot x size, and this dot y size. And that will draw the GUI. Um, can, and then we're going to add the parameters in here. Player dot inventory. Actually, just copy everything from the container up here and give it a save to make sure that all the errors go away. So go into registry handler, go down to init registries. Network registry dot instance dot register GUI handler main dot instance and new GUI handler. People that watch the finished tutorial will already have this, and for the new ones, there you go. Init registries should go into main init and then it registers in there. Then go into the tile entity handler, which if you don't have, create one. We created it in the Finish tutorial as well. Game registry dot register tile entity tile entity copper chest dot class and a new resource location reference dot ID colon copper chest and then register tile entities needs to go into registry handler under register under register block tile entity handler dot register tile entities. So now when we run the game. We will get errors, obviously, because we do not have any textures for this, which we're doing in the next episode. So go into your tab. You'll find this copper chest here. You, yours won't be called copper chest, so you don't have the line yet, but I already had it. Place it down, and it'll be invisible as well. But right-click, open it up, and we have copper chest inventory, and we have all these slots with it all lined up. Obviously, if you created your own GUI, um, and you want to, and these slots are misaligned, 
what you want to do is run it in debug mode then so you make a few number changes and you click F3 and T and it will reload all textures meaning that um, all these will realign again and you can see how much you have to move it again and keep doing that repeatedly so you don't have to keep, keep rebooting Minecraft so anyway as you can see guys we've got quite a lot done in this episode so finally in the next episode we are going to be getting a texture for this as well as we'll be able to see this opening animation and understanding how tile entity special renderers work so thanks for watching this video if you've liked it leave a like down below and subscribe if you want to see the next part thanks for watching my name has been harry and goodbye